I mean, not, I'm not sure if I need to tell you this, but you know, some of your shirts are kind of kind of crappy. I mean, you know. What do you What do you mean by crappy? They got like a sweet little pocket right here. I uh, mean, that's... they could be better. I mean, there's some. There's a place I know where it has lots of lots of cool stuff. Uh, yeah, but but how cool? We're talking about triple A cool. We're talking about shirts from 86.com. They're a pretty cool site. They sell all types of merchandise, including T-shirts, keychains, and other cool stuff that they sell on their site. Uh, and they also have awesome video game material as well, such as Street Fighter, Killer Instinct, Guilty Gear, Skullgirls, Blaze Blue, Smite, and 86 own brand of T-shirts as well as, well as other stuff. Um, recently, they put out some new keychain for Street Fighter V. So, yeah, there's some awesome stuff there. So I'm just suggesting, you know... Next time you go out and buy a shirt of any kind, I suggest check out 86.com. And if you want to support us and them at the same time, please use this link in, the, in your web browser to check out 86.com. Put in www.86.com question mark AFF equals 4. Again, www.86.com question mark AFF equals 4. This link will tell them that we sent you and that we're cool with them as long as you're cool with us. Thank you and enjoy the show. make one my own. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good idea. Hey guys, give me a second here. There we go. There's a sweet sound of music. Hello everybody, this is Anthony Bionis from Mission Star Podcast. We are back from a week break. Well, more or less, it's, it, it was an excuse of me wanting to watch Evo last weekend, but, um, you know, aside from that, uh, we are back. We're here to talk about news, so you can see to the to the right of me. Uh, with me, as always, is the one and only um, Cheeseburger uh, joining us tonight. Can you not see my face? No, we said we, we see Cheeseburger. Uh, it, it, what was it? Uh, it was a character from Game Grumps, right? What is going on? No, that's not from Game Grumps. That's Fox. Uh, okay, all right. Well, there you go. Now we can see your face. Hey, there is his this face. This new Skype sucks. Discord, help us. Or maybe we should try the other thing again. Maybe we got better the Twitch one. Oh, I have. Yeah, I haven't even looked into it. Yeah, I'll we can maybe try it next week. See if it works. Oh, damn it! There we go. But Wait, no. yeah, sorry for late lateness, guys. Um, so we're back. We got some new. It was funny. So last time we had a podcast, there was literally like no news or like very few of it. Like this past week, we got a crap ton of news. Mm-hmm. Just just it's like either, it either sprinkles or fucking monsoons yeah it's kind of crazy so yeah this is this is pretty it's a pretty big one um okay so i think the first thing i do want to start off with is um evo just afterthoughts um i said last week that we had no show last week because we went to go to a viewing party and, and uh, watch it and it was really cool um i had a lot of fun and uh obviously you know there's a lot of big announcements at the uh, at the event um, and, you know, it's a lot of good tournaments. I love the, the KOF, uh, ten- tournament. It was, really, it, was, it was long, but it was good. Um, Guilty Gear was crazy. Uh, I loved, I loved Tekken, and obviously Street Fighter V was pretty hype. Um, what I will say, though, like, out of all the big announcements, the one that got me the most excited, because I had no idea that it was going to happen, was Geese Howard coming to Tekken. And for those who don't know, Geese Howard is a villain character in King of Fighters. Uh, he's been in the King of Fighters games for a very long time, and uh, he was in uh, uh, CBS2. People really liked him. Um, and uh, was it uh, was company? Um, Bando Namkai reached out to uh, SNK. It's like, hey, can we use your character in this game? Which the crazy thing now is the fact that uh, this because Akuma is already in Tekken Seven. 
Um, so this means that chronologically in the Tekken universe, uh, a Street Fighter and KOF are in the same world. So, which is funny and it makes sense though if you think about it. So, but it was really sick. It's really cool. Like again, I love watching Tekken. I love high level Tekken. I love the uh, the character models that they put in the game. They're really really nice. Um, and it's really cool. It's really awesome. So, yeah, seeing seeing Geese put put in got me really excited. Among other things, but that was probably the biggest surprise to me. So, um, did you, ma- you manage catching any uh, evil action last weekend? I didn't. I got. I was really busy with. Um, God, what was I busy with? I was busy with something on Friday and Saturday, and I didn't get to catch any of it. And I was like, I want to go back and watch VODs. And then the night of the finals, I ended up having like spending a bunch of time with family and then going to see uh, movies at the drive-in. Oh. So yeah, I just didn't have. I didn't get to. And um, uh, but I heard that like uh, the Smash tournament ended on a big oh, note. Oh my God! It's the best ending. That's the best ending. Oh my God! So. Oh. Yeah, that, for those who don't know, the Smash 4 tournament happened at EVO last weekend. It was the game before Street Fighter 5, and it was between uh, Zero, who has been the most dominant Smash player uh, in the scene, versus uh, Salem, who had a really, really awesome Bayonetta. And the entire scene hates Bayonetta so much because she has true combos, and she has stuff in the game that, well, you know, the rest of the FGC find cool, like the people in Smash don't like. So, the crazy thing about that is that with this character, you can actually kill a character in Smash 4 that is like around 40-30%. A very little number because she has true combos and she has this thing where if she puts you high in the air, she can actually knock you out. And that's exactly what happened. And the funny thing is, is like, Zero, this this player who, 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 uh, who Sam was playing against, he like back then said like Bay- uh, uh, Beowulf, um, Bayonetta is, is cancer to the scene. Like this character is wrong and all that bad stuff. And to be and to him to lose to that to that character, it was the best ending. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I'm not one for for social chaos, but you know in, in the instance of that, I I purely enjoyed it. I was laughing my ass off. It was great. But yeah, I need to go back and watch. Like, I need to find a YouTube video that just kind of like highlights a lot of the finals and whatnot. Because I was, you really, know, that's what I was looking forward to actually trying to catch, and I didn't. Just do it. I would say if you want something like that, actually, uh, speaking of which, um, a video went up recently. It's uh, look up uh, Maximilian, um, uh, or Maximilian dude on YouTube. Uh, he's got a top five moments of Evo, and uh, I'd say that you probably should check it out because there's they're pretty much kind of cements uh, Evo overall. Mm-hmm. It's really good, but yeah, it happened, and uh, yeah, I had fun. Evil is always a fun thing to watch every year, and I really enjoy it. So, um, sorry guys who, who, who were kind of wondering where, where our podcast was. Uh, Evil took president last weekend, so, but it was cool. It was pretty awesome. Now, um, while that was happening, the same that same weekend, another thing happened that was also huge. Um, we got a release year to Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, this game was uh, shown off at the D23 event, the Disney kind of Comic Con event. Um, and they were showcasing all of the Mar- uh, Disney properties, including Marvel and Star Wars and whatnot. One of which, they showed a new trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. It looks really sick. Looks really cool. Um, and at the very end of the trailer, uh, they showed off that it's coming in 2018. So we finally got a release year, not specifically a release date yet but a year so um and a lot of people are kind of stuck are already like saying like you know don't count on it rpg fans like look at look what happened to persona 4 or uh, persona 5 and how that was originally supposed to be like released years ago but it got pushed back over and over again so speculation is that you know it's gonna be coming out next year but also speculation is like you know hey this game is you know don't be surprised this game gets pushed and delayed for another year or two um, also, the fact that like Tor Story uh, is now in the uh, in the game, like as, as a world that uh, Sora can go through, which is really cool, and it looks really good actually. Yeah, it's yeah, it's. Uh, it, I was really excited to hear that it's gonna be at least coming. Like we have a we have a window, which is a whole year, but it's a, it's a window nonetheless. Right. Um. But I was more excited that they were like, hey, we're gonna be adding Toy Story three because that means that. 
there's potential for more unique IPs in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some rumors saying that it, that it's going to be like a Marvel like uh, comic book world where you know. You I get... figured there'd be Marvel and Star Wars. Yeah, that's that's the speculation right now. Um, we may we'll probably see in the future. Maybe they'll keep it secret until later on. But uh, this is <laughs> the funny thing. So two things. One, like Kingdom Hearts three, in my opinion, is kind of one of those games that have been like one of the top games as far as like you know longest running game that has not got gotten a sequel or an ending or was in development it's much in line as for as, uh, much in the same idea as um beyond Good and evil 2 the ever so often talked about half-life 3 that will never happen um you know and other games of that ilk so it's it's rare to have these type of games um so you know we had we had a uh, the one game from uh, from from Team Eco last uh, last year that took ten years to make, and now we got uh, Nomura with his Kingdom Hearts three, which what was it? I think I read somewhere like it was two thousand two thousand two is when the whole where the entire series started of Kingdom Hearts. So this, this thing has been going on for about a good fifteen years, which is crazy. Um, but the big era of like post two thousand ten, which is uh, there was the 90s kids who all kind of grew up and then they went to college and stuff in the 2000s and then got into production and got to be able to write things and make sure that things got pushed forward. Now we live in the 2010s where those people are in charge and that's why we're seeing a lot of resurgence of like, oh, Will and Grace is coming back for another season. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about uh, that. <laughs> we got, um, oh, what, what else was announced just recently? Oh, the um, Rock was Modern Life. Yeah. And, Yes. Like, it's just, that's, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. We're going to see a lot more of these franchises and games that are going to actually be having a conclusion. And yeah, it's both great and not great, but I could get into that some other time because I don't think it's what we need to get into. But yeah, I am excited about Kingdom Hearts 3. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, the, the problem is, is then something I've kind of talked about with other people is um, this is a little off topic from what you have written there. Um, Will Kingdom Hearts 3 have a recap of what the f- what's been going on? Did they have a recap in 2? No, they didn't actually. Mm-hmm. I remember that. When my f- oh, yeah, one one was great. It was a little convoluted, but it was it was fun. It's um, hard, hard as hell. <laughs> it is. Um, but it was simple. It was uh, you know, Sora, Riku and uh, Kairi are um, dealing with their problems and they all get separated, and then Sora finds Mickey and Donald, and I'm sorry, Donald and Goofy, and has to fight Heartless in order to save Riku from Heartless, um, which he's technically being controlled, and try to find um, Kairi entirely. And um, it's a touching story about friendship and yada yada yada. And then the sequel comes around, and you play as some kid that you've never heard of for two hours, and then you finally get to play as Sora, and Sora's as confused as the player, which kind of didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, because if you didn't play Chain of Memories, you were confused and lost. Well, at this point, there have been four other games. There has been. There has been a lot of spinoffs. So we need some we need some backstory. We need some information going into three. They can't just drop us in and have us start playing uh, as if this is the finale that we've all been like waiting for. Because realistically. It's not. Um, you have to think about when. Let me let me do this for you because this will this will blow your damn mind, Anthony. Okay. So we're on the Kingdom. Heart. Oops. Not hearts like Kevin Hart's. Right? <laughs> um. So Kingdom Hearts one came out in two thousand two. Yeah. My nephew Dustin was born in two thousand three. Meaning, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I, 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 I had something plugged in. Oops. Okay, I was like, there was a slight buzz. Yeah, that was for uh, the um, Overwatch minute later on. Okay. Um, yeah, Kingdom Hearts came out in 2002. Meaning that my nephew was born after Kingdom Hearts. Ooh, man. Meaning that by the time Kingdom Hearts comes out, A, will he be interested? Probably not, because I know his taste in games is terrible. The Call of Duty is the best. Okay. Um, but 
he will not know what is going on in Kingdom Hearts 3. To be fair, the Kingdom Hearts story is pretty complicated. Just because I remember, remember watching like those short, like, you know, summarized Kingdom Hearts story in five minutes. And I was like watching that and it's like, oh, I think I kind of get it. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, I, I need, I need them to have an ep- or a prologue. A prologue that explains uh, Sora's story very easily. Yeah. 20 minutes. I'd say 20 minutes. Yeah. If the game doesn't start with a 20-minute prologue about what the hell's been going on all the way up until we start 3, it's not going to work. A lot of players, including myself, don't have time to go back and play 1 and 2. Don't have time to play the other ones. We need to have a recap. Period. I think so, too. Especially with this type of game and just how big it is, like, the story-wise. I think this is much needed because again this has been a game that's been in development for 10 years i'm i'm pretty sure this game was supposed to come out in the last generation but was pushed I, to the I next i guarantee you this game has not been in development for 10 years it's been in development for like four but um it was uh pseudo written 10 years ago yeah yeah um it's just that there's just so much there's so much information there's so much backstory in yeah yeah it's like great i'm glad it's coming out next year but if if it doesn't have a proper like diving in point like boy oh boy is it not going to do well yeah uh, well i think it will i think it will do well because um the reason being you know there's a huge there's a huge uh fan base for kingdom hearts um for the longest time and kingdom hearts has been they keep it as some themselves relevant with these spin-off games and the re-releases of some other games of King Hearts games 1 and 2 HD and whatnot um I think the game will do well also because it's Disney because when they see Toy Story you know a lot of people are like oh awesome Toy Story well, it'll, get av- it'll get advertised to Oblivion for sure yeah um, I'm just saying dude like and I'm not just talking about do well financially I'm talking about do well like critically I think it will do well critically as well I, 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 I can so. smell it. I can I smell it in the water. So. It's going to do critically well with the with game reviews and ga- in game sales. I can't say whether or not it's going to do well. I'm saying that how they decide to tell the story will all depend on how well they do. That's well, true. That's true. I mean, this tour, this, the storytelling is going to be very critical, especially for this game, to tie up everything, hopefully. Unless they like, hey, we're doing a, f- a fourth or whatever. I mean, it's, so. a, it's a Square Enix game. It's going to be convoluted, but... yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not concerned about the convolutedness. I'm concerned about like, hey, uh, so if you if you've never seen Star Wars, should you start at uh, Return of the Jedi? Yeah, I know. I hear it. I hear it. One one more thing to add to this craziness. Um, so I I, I I read that Nomura, the director of the game, have said and stated that uh, Kingdom Hearts three will chrono- will chronologically or or, or is canon. That it, it takes place after Toy Story 2. Like, he said, he went, went out there and said, like, yeah, that that is canon. Between 2 and 3, apparently, Kingdom Hearts happened in the Toy Story universe. So. I don't. Boy, I, oh, that's so weird to, like, state. Yeah, it's. I, I have not looked back to see if Disney's have, have, have confirmed that, but if that, if that did, it'd be weird, but. That makes a whole lot of other can of worms now. It's like, wait, so that does that mean like Kingdom Hearts is now in the Disney universe? Like, chronologically? No, I, I, what I'm hoping he meant to say was that um, Kingdom Hearts 3 takes place between 2 and 3, but the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1 took place right after Toy Story 2. No. I so remember, that way... No, the... the I, for, like what I remember reading is that he said it takes like Kingdom Hearts three, the events of, ha- of Kingdom Hearts three. No, no, no. Well, Anthony, what I'm saying is I'm hoping that he misspoke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not saying you aren't correct. What I'm saying right. is I'm hoping that he is like he's saying it incorrectly because. Yeah, I, 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 I will give you benefit of the doubt because like it was a translator that was there translating for him. So it, there may be some mistake that might have happened, um, with these translations. But if, you know. It's just it's just a weird like it's such a weird like no none of the other games have ever mattered in that regard. Um, none of the other games have ever been like 
well it takes place exactly right here it's just kind of like it takes place yeah like, it doesn't it doesn't ultimately matter where it takes place yeah um so i would imagine that what he's trying to say is that kingdom hearts 3 when you when you meet up with them it's between two and three and that the beginning of of kingdom hearts one happened at the same time as the beginning of toy story one so that way you can kind of understand when and how they meet up oh yeah i see what you're saying i see what you're saying um I think that's. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, I gotta go back and research more about it. But I remember him saying, that. "I was like, it made me wonder." It's like, huh? Yeah. 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 What, <laughs> what he actually said, like what you're quoting him as saying, is super bizarre to say that. I know, I know, but this is a man who's worked on this game for a very long time, so. Also, also, it was translated, so. Yes, that is true. That is true. I don't care how long somebody works on something, you still misspeak. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on to our next topic on our list. Uh, so we talked about it, I want to say, two weeks ago on, on the podcast. And I think it's being brought up again because freaking hell, this game is – at a point you would think this game would stop earning a lot of money, but it gets, keeps on going. Uh, so this is uh, this is off of Steam Spy and also reported from other websites um steam spy is a website where you can actually tra- track game uh as far as like how much it's selling what the trend whatnot uh recently uh it has reached over 5 million copies sold and uh this was as of as of was it last week and uh, let's say let me see yeah as of uh yeah <laughs> as of last week this game has sold 5 million copies and this game is even out yet well, I mean, there's the definition of a game being out and being on uh, green light. Like the, the 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 lines between those are, are very blurry nowadays. As far as like you know, what is a game finished and what's not um, using the Steam uh, green light uh, program. But this game has been it's nuts. And the, and we kind of talked before the fact that you know it was you know again it was most popularity came from Twitch that promoted this game in such a way and since then just blew up like yeah. to ridiculous numbers so like you know people are saying I, like, last we talked about this game i said that i had no interest in it and i said that was because um it was like it was just like arma or, or daisy or hd1 h1z1 and i just didn't care well i've actually took the time to watch to watch streams of the game I've taken time to watch full playthroughs of people playing matches, and I have changed my opinion. Um, I think the game actually looks really cool. Yeah. I mean, I love the premise, too, but it's like, it is a battle royale uh, with guns. And the cool thing is, like, you know, you're, as you're fighting, as you're getting cover, and as you're getting equipment along the way, like, the space of where you enter the field gets smaller and smaller, so that eventually you'll be in such a small space where there's literally like no cover left to, to do and you gotta you know fight it out um well i like i like the rng aspect so i think that's what what i was like oh i didn't realize it was that rng okay cool like i there was a lot more to it than i had given it credit for because i thought it was just the same as that other stuff just with like a, a closing in like centerpiece i was like no eh, whatever right but right it is different um that being said, like, um, you know, we talked last week about it, uh, it, it being extremely popular because of certain things, and it's not entirely like, it's not entirely shock, like, terribly shocking that it hit five million. Uh, I, mean, I expect I expect it to hit more when it hits Xbox One. Oh yeah, definitely. That's um, a good point. That's a good point. And when it goes, when it comes out of beta. I expected to hit more. Oh man. Well, do you think so? Because I feel like at this point, like it's gaining a lot of money and people like the game. What? I because I know a lot. I not personally know people, but I've heard people say that they refuse to play it until it comes out of beta because they don't want to play a half half built game. Huh. Okay. Even though, even though, I, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the developer did say that uh, when it's um. Like, people who've bought in the beta, when it's completed, they'll just have the full game. Um, I do not know, but I relay my knowledge. I wouldn't doubt that he would say that, though. 
Especially, yeah, I mean, it seems ridiculous that he would be like, oh, well, pay for the full game that you paid for the beta. Yeah. I, I, I think that that sounds pretty reasonable, sounds pretty right. Um, it is quite insane. that, And there's some things that they've been, they were fixing or adding to the game, so they're, they're definitely working on it. And um, I'm very curious to see what the final, final product of this game is going to look like. But just the sheer amount of money that has been been gained so far with a game that's not even done yet is is crazy and again like they kind of you know i i've heard a lot of people even especially like on giant bomb and other sites i kind of have those conversations like especially for game of the years like you know at what point like you know i mean what may have this conversation another time but like you know at what point like do you have a game that's been in development for so long that's been gaining money that is in green light and not done yet versus a finished product that we're normally used to seeing and you know, do you consider that part of just as your? Uh, I think I think a lot of like we, we we've talked about the the uh, um, evolution of of gaming and what the culture says and does nowadays when it comes to what they want to play and how they want to play things. And at the end of the day, um, when it comes to multiplayer games, uh, there needs to be giant betas. There needs to be long giant betas where they can test servers, where they can test the game. Um, uh, outsourcing essentially um, uh, tester work, bug work, whatever, to streamers, to just average Joes is absolutely brilliant. And that's why Player Unknown Battlegrounds will be a very well done and good game simply because they tested the absolute hell out of it. Um, a perfect example of a game that did not get tested well and does not work very well. Even though it's fun as a fun as a fun as a mother fudge, is uh, Friday Thirteenth. Oh yeah, that yeah, game has that's a true. load of problems. It does, it does. And uh, um, unfortunately, they didn't take the time to beta test it like they should have. And uh, but battle, but I don't know, man. That game is it's been in, it's been in beta and available to everybody for like months now. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just to me, it's 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 a smart thing to listen to your consumers. It's a smart thing to go to the extent of understanding that your game needs testing. It needs large amounts of testing, not just not just um, uh, like internal testing, but like outsource testing. It absolutely needs it. Um. I uh, I also think that that by doing the outsource testing, you are um, you're listening to the to the player base who's going to be playing your game a lot, mm-hmm. and yeah. that that will help too in in terms of changing things or adjusting things um, as need be, just based on how the player base feels about it. And I'm not just saying that in regards to like. Uh, Bastion's OP, change him. <laughs> I mean, in regards to, um, hey guys, just so you know, there's a there's a small like spot on a map that somebody can glitch into and then shoot us, and we can't shoot them. You know. Right, right, and there's definitely a de- delicate balance when it comes to that. I mean, there, at one point you do need that feedback from players who play the game a lot, and you know you value your input. At the same time, if you cater too much to one side of it, you and you don't ca- and you don't. Oh sure, sure. sure. Adju- that's you know, what I'm talking. That's what I'm yeah. talking about with the like bash- bastions OP change it. Yeah, yeah. You don't want you don't want to listen to the people who are just complaining to complain. You want to listen to the people who are going to give decent feedback. And and th- there's a lot there's a lot of people giving feedback where they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. Um, I hear it all the time in Friday Thirteenth and Overwatch in Destiny Two Beta. Um, it's just, I still, I still think that in regards to what I'm saying, um, developers need to take, if your if your game is strictly pri- like, or primarily multiplayer, take all that to heart. Like take, like do go to that extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's important that you listen to that fan base because they're the ones who are going to be buying your game. Um, we'll get it to it. We'll get to it later when uh, actually the next topic. Um, <laughs> but there was a big thing with with Destiny that or Destiny Two Beta that the developers even came out and said like, "We hear you. 
We 100% hear you. Um, a developer right now that's still doing it, and I think it's fantastic, is, is, is the Overwatch development team. They listen to everything, good or bad. Like, they want their players to have fun. And it sounds like the guys at Battlegrounds want the same thing. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely companies who, who, are, who are adopting that uh, balance between, you know, which characters or what or how to level the gameplay. Um, oh, sorry. And I think that Battlegrounds right now is doing a pretty good job so far. And, and it, it obviously shows with the amount of money they've made in, in a recently short uh, amount of time uh, to, you know, being still one of the like, most streamed games on Twitch. Yeah. Um, it's 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 crazy and nuts, but it's also the same time like you know good on them for for you know making this amount of money and also you know balancing a really good game so yeah. far. Yeah, I think I think it, you know it's also important. It's also imperative that if you have a game that has a hundred players on one map, you absolutely need to beta test the crap. Oh baby, that. yeah, definitely. Because a game like a game like Fortnite that just came out doesn't really need a whole lot of beta testing or almost none at all because it's a four player co op thing like. There is no multiplayer outside of that. Yeah, it's um, yeah. But on that note, a game like uh, Dungeon Defenders 2, which just came out on Xbox, it's been on PC and PS4 for a long time now. Um, they needed a beta test that because it, it, it like the, the matchmaking is awful. Yeah, definitely. So, so definitely. there's I don't know there's there's definitely a delicate balance, a give and take, if you will. But uh, I think overall, the way that the guys that battlegrounds have done it correctly mm-hmm. agreed agreed you need to find out if they're going to be giving if if basically the people who bought the beta get it get it get the full game for i would assume so i would assume so I, it would be pretty crappy them for not to, to not do it but you know but I, I think they will i've heard worse i've yeah. heard better so i'm, I'm yeah. just like we need to find out yeah uh, moving on to our next topic, uh, as we spoke a little bit, uh, or as uh, Greg kind of talked about a little bit earlier, uh, Destiny 2 beta uh, just launched on consoles uh, this past week. Um, I didn't look up as far as like how long they're going for um, uh, for the consoles. Uh, do you by any chance know, Greg? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, so it was supposed to go till tonight or mm-hmm. Sunday when we're recording this. Right. But. Um, they just tweeted out today that they're going to extend it to Tuesday night at like till 6 p.m. or something like that. Well, did they say the reason why, or just being just just, just needed a, um, longer testing periods? Oh, okay. All right, that's cool. Um, the beta came out for consoles. Um, I got myself a beta code. But I'm waiting for the PC version, which should be out in August. Uh, so I'll definitely play around with that. What I've uh, seen so far is that uh, the game, the, the the shooting is as good as it was last time, if not if not better. Um, it just definitely like a you can play multiplayer PvP and there's like a, a story a little short story element you play in the beginning of the game of the of the beta um, as as well as the strike is involved. There's only one strike available right now, right? Yeah. So what it is is um, it's the opening mission, which I have to imagine the opening mission will be very similar to what we've played in the like what we'll play in the final game is very similar to what we just played. Um, so the way that it starts is it just goes, do you want to play as a warlock, a titan, or a hunter? Just flat out. No ifs, ands, or buts. You're going to start as this character. Um, and you just you just go into it. Like the opening cutscene happens and then you're playing. Um, whereas I imagine that when you play um, the full game, it'll be like, do you want to transport your character from Destiny 1? So that way he looks the same. Or do you want to start an entirely new character? Which I'm going to start an entirely new character. Um... <laughs> Uh, mainly because I played Warlock in Destiny 1, and I've been playing Hunter in the beta, and I really like the Hunter, so... Um, everyone's going, ow, he's a Hunter, gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, that being said, um, uh, I'm sorry. Ooh, ah. uh, Man, so rude. I know. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of where I was. So yeah, I think if you if you start a brand new character, it'll have you go through the character creation, the face, the voice, the whatever. It'll have you go through all that, uh, gender and yada yada yada. Uh, oh, and race. I forgot there's multiple races in Destiny. Uh, but it doesn't end the beta. You just dive right in. And um, the opening mission is um, interesting. Uh, it's single player. There's no teaming up with a friend, and you can't do it again. 
in the beta, unless you start a new character, which you can only do that three times. You can only do, yeah, you can only do it three times. Okay. Um, and I think that's just so you can test out the new classes and the new uh, subclasses to each of those characters. Like, right, right. Just go yeah. back and just kind of check out, you know, what's uh, how each one plays out. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. It's uh, the opening mission is a lot of fun. But like I said, it's single player because even though they showed multiplayer in the E3 demo, mm-hmm. um, there is a point where you hit that you hit that like center social area that was in the in Destiny One, mm-hmm. um, and it's all like destroyed and stuff. Well, as you hit that spot, there's like two other players at that exact same location. It works seamlessly. Cool, awesome. Like I, I wish I wish I was not I wish I was joking. Like there was every single time I played it, all three times there were just people there sick i was like this is awesome like that that's just rad like it just kind of immerses you in the world it was really fucking cool and then um uh and then after you finish the the opening cutscene, you are then in a just a default ship uh depending on what class it's different for each class um and then you're given uh one map for just like regular quick play multiplayer uh one strike and one competitive map for multiplayer um both maps are fine. They're very Destiny esque, or if you want to be, if you want to get even further, Halo esque. Mm-hmm. Um, the four v four aspect definitely changes how people will remember Destiny. Um, but the biggest factor is that a lot of the abilities, including the grenade, they come back a lot slower. It takes a, it takes like a solid sixty seconds just for the grenade to come back. Mm, mm. I see. I see. Which I mean is inherently kind of a problem. Um, uh, but, um, also the weapons are super, super baseline. Um, the biggest issue that I, I personally have with the beta, and this is more of a personal gripe than anything, because realistically it's not on the game, it's not on the beta itself, because I understand why it's not like this, but, um, the beta, uh, only has that stuff that I just said the strike and the two multiplayer maps. Mm -hmm. Destiny 1's beta had um, almost the entire Earth available to just explore and run around it. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, You could level up all the way to 8. And you could do that one strike as many times as you want. Like, there was a lot more to do in the first Destiny beta. Mm -hmm. But this one's one's very limited. Like, incredibly limited. So... I was going to ask about that. Um, now, I remember I remember looking up, or I remember hearing that uh, the stuff you have, the stuff you find and get in the beta, will not carry over to the main game. Is that true? Absolutely not. It will be. It does not carry over. So you're at okay. level twenty the entire beta. Oh, no okay. What, All yeah, right. No matter what, yeah. No matter what you go into, you're level twenty. And um, mm. every weapon, every weapon and armor piece that you have, is either. Um, uh, not exotic, but the one just under exotic, which I think was rare, okay, or legendary or something like that. Okay. Because um, exotics, you can only have one exotic equipped on the weapon side and the armor side. Um, so it's the same kind of idea. Uh, Destiny Two is not that different from Destiny One. Like it really, really isn't. Uh, the gameplay is almost exactly the same. Um, like just slight tweaks. And when I say slight, I'm talking about like nothing major in any way, shape, or form. Right, right. Uh-huh. It it just feels like a proper Destiny two, um, hmm. but it also feels like to to a more ex- like a further extent. And from what they've explained at E three as well, like what Destiny one should have been. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of very what I think everybody wanted, and that you know again. A lot of people, including my my ilk, um, are giving Destiny 2 a chance because Destiny 1, the promises that were made in that game, didn't come out in fruition. This game is is so far, and what have been you know has been said, it's kind of uh, making those promises that they weren't able to in, in one. Yeah, we we did a podcast, did a long podcast. Oh yeah. One came out with like a group of us, <laughs> and the biggest thing that came from that was that we. He has a group did not like Destiny One, except for one and, person. And most, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they didn't get to be a part of the podcast. <laughs> um, uh, 
But the reasons we didn't like Destiny One were, were very much like the same reason that everybody didn't like Destiny One. It was yeah. yeah. There just wasn't a whole lot to do after you finished the campaign and hit level twenty. Like it was just grinding at that point, and the grinding wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, this looks to be different. This looks to be like, if if what they've said is true, if each open world area is five times bigger than any open world area in the first game, that's fantastic. If it takes you longer to get to level twenty, awesome. If it's if it's a situation where like there's no more light level crap, awesome. <laughs> Like, yeah, if, there, yeah. if there is light level stuff, give us multiple options on building that light level. The other thing I've, I've heard about, too, that people are kind of – were talking about um, in this beta was just there's a lot of platforming in, in this beta. Um, that, I love that. I personally love that. Hmm. I, I've heard I've, I've heard obviously that people actually do not like the fact that there's platforming. Well, I think a lot of people don't like the, the platforming because um, they weren't fans of it in the first game. Uh, when like you do the raid and there's platforming segments, but like I even argue, I argued consistently that the uh, levels in general, when it comes to Destiny One, were boring. They were straight up boring. They were either just giant arenas for you to kill everything, or straight pathways for you to kill everything. There was no fun like, oh well, let's figure out how to get past this platform while it's disappearing from below our feet. The raid that they are not raid, but the the, the um. Uh, the strike that you get are given in the st- in the beta is a blast. Nice. It's so much fun. I just stopped playing because I was like, I'm not really building anything, and I feel like I'm just playing it to play it. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing too that I was kind of uh, when I when I was hearing more people talk about it because like I was thinking like you know hey I can play this game and whatever I, I get will move on to the final build. Apparently it's not the case. So like it's it's it is you know it is a demo. And in all intents and purposes, except you're gonna play the multiplayer. Like if you want to, you know, keep playing that, that's on you know, that's on you. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super into the PvP when it comes to Destiny. I never have been. Um, I, I'm sure that I will play it because I'll have friends that are playing it. But I think overall, I'm not like gonna be super into it. Um, my yeah. my jam has always been the PVE when it comes yeah. to Destiny. And yeah. It's like there's like just so much PVE this round. I know. But so much. On top of um, that, they're actually making a concerned effort with the story this time around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's another thing about the, the uh, strike that I thought was really rad was um, the strike is completed. Like, it's in its full, complete form. So you get voice acting and everything. And uh, the first time I went through, I was like, who's this, like, AI character talking to me? Who's this, like, chick that yeah. says she's, she's hacking into some yeah. system or something like that? Like, yeah. that's really cool. And then the second time I played it, Ghost and the AI are arguing. So, oh, cool. So the multiple times that I play Strikes, the different dialogue I can get. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Not hearing the same thing twice is so much. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, going through the Strikes, it seems like it's going to be the same thing as the first game where the enemies spawn in the exact same locations and you start to kind of learn exactly where everybody is and yada, yada, yada. But if you have multiple strikes and uh, multiple things to do outside of strikes, like strikes aren't going to be that boring anymore. Um, uh, it won't but just be going through the motions. And I think that that's going to be very exciting for anybody playing the game. Um, I think old fans, like big, big people who play Destiny 1 are going to have a hard time getting into Destiny 2 just because it's the same stigma that other big sequels get. Gets, Jesus Christ. Talk, talk directly here. Um, it's that uh, it's not like the the game that I know, and I don't mm. like it for that. I, I mean, I, you've, you've seen that a thousand times, Andrew, right? I mean, like it is for most games, especially multiplayer games, especially specifically in funny games as well. Um, I've been hearing a lot more positive, uh, positive talk about this game, Destiny Two, than Destiny One, and maybe maybe it's just people who had jumped on the game early, like like I have, and then you know are willing to give it a second chance. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, my ear was not to the ground when it comes to what, you know, the Destiny, uh, fans have, have said, or, you know, what if they're, how their feelings are, uh, for Destiny 2, but from my, just from, just from the outside looking in, just from hearing other podcasts from other game outlets, you know, it's been relatively positive, just like looking forward for Destiny 2. I think that people, people who play a lot of different games, people who are like me, like you, where... We're not we're not playing one game over and over and over again. We don't sit there and go, well, what game do you mean? Like we don't do that. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
well, I mean, if you're if you're if you're trying to train for a game that's different, if you're trying to become a you know a pro at Overwatch or Smash, you know, you're gonna play that game a lot. Um, um, or if there's like some if there's some other caveat, but uh, there are people who don't stream who just play the game for fun and they that's all they played was was Destiny, and now they're on the forums complaining that it's not like Destiny, that there's too there's too many differences and too many things that piss them off and. And, and granted, I'll, I'll give I'll give them credit. Like, yeah, state those concerns. Absolutely, tell Bungie, hey guys, not a fan of this thing. Do that. But you know, do it with a bit of class. Um, and and Destiny is, or well, Bungie is going to the extent of saying, we hear you. We hear you. We're going to make changes. The grenades will come back faster in the final game. Uh, everyone's abilities will, will be different. Like, there's there's going to be some changes. The game is not in gold yet, so there's a lot of, like, um, touch-ups they can do, waxing of the hood, if you will. Um, so I, I think... Uh, I think at the end of the day, a lot of people's concerns and complaints are uh, going to be going to be solved or fixed, but even in the final version, like, people are going to complain. People are going to be very upset. Yeah. I mean... I, you can't really yeah. avoid that. Yeah. I think people will complain regardless... Um, you know, whether it be good or bad for whatever community is or, you know, or whatnot. But I think so far, you know, I've been hearing, again, I've been hearing nothing good stuff from a lot of people who played the beta. Um, I'll play it like next month when the PC version goes up and I'll give my thoughts about the PC beta version. Um, and because I believe like the consoles, are they locked at 30, 30 frames? Yes. Okay. And I, and, uh, Destiny 2 on PC is on 60. So, um, I've been hearing a lot of people complain about that, um, it's, but I still, it's I, I, still argue, <laughs> yeah, I still argue to this extent that 30 frames is not drastically different enough from 60 frames for you to sit there and be completely like dis, just disconnected from the game. Oh, it's, I can't even see what's happening. Like, <laughs> that, that is, it, it is funny, but true. It's, it's like, hey, I'm going to play Call of Duty on PC because I get that 60 frames per second. I can't see shit, but it's awesome. <laughs> um, it's just, it's yeah. a non, it's such yeah. a non-issue to me that I just don't, I don't. It is, it, it's a non-issue. I, I think, you know, 30 to 60 is fine. Um, but, you know, when the, when it goes up for PC, I'll definitely give my, my thoughts on it on this podcast. Uh, but yeah, I've been hearing nothing but good things about it. So, you know, so it yeah, sounds, I'm, it sounds I'm excited, from, I'm excited for the, oh, oh, that's the thing I want to talk about real quick. So today for an hour. Uh, from 10 to 11, they opened up the uh, the farm. One of the yeah, I heard about that. So, so I got to. I'm I'm excited. So there were 10 different areas in which I noticed that that people could go and talk to somebody or shop. Yeah. Um, which is really exciting because if you remember in the original Destiny, there was only like four or five. Yeah. And then the further the further it went down, it opened up even more. Mm-hmm. So I'm really hoping that a lot that like some of those spaces are like not limited or that they um, like there's some spaces that are obvious. So there's like a giant hangar area where there were some ships. I was like, okay, this is where um, the the ship lady is going to be. Oh, okay, this area has a bunch of guns. This is where the armament's going to be. This area has like what looks like a giant globe on a table. So this might be where I pick up missions. You know, like there were obvious things like that, but there were some locations like. There was a weird like generator thing next to a um, a dock that had a had a computer next to it, and I was like, I wonder like if we're gonna be able to do anything over here. Like, it was a really neat idea, but also it was much bigger than like it seemed to be. And once I tried to like walk away from this gate, it would be like, turn back or you're gonna die in five seconds. Um, and it was really interesting to see what it looked like, and I'm very excited to see what it'll look like in the final game. Uh, but the only thing to really do in that social space was there was play soccer. Oh wait, you can play soccer in the game. So there was a there was a tiny tiny field that had nothing in it but a soccer ball in the center, and there were two there were two goals at either end. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy doing that. When I stream that game, whenever it comes out uh, available for PC, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, be interesting. yeah, I'm assuming that you the only way you can move is by shooting it, right? No, you can slide kick into it or just run up to it and it moves. Oh, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> I didn't see anybody shoot at it because it's uh, it's a social space, so I don't think you'd have your guns out. Mm. Um, and uh, remind me, like, there's no cross uh, play between console and PC, right? Not that I know of. Okay, no. I'm hoping I'm crossing my fingers for that. That'd be awesome. But uh, okay. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it, it's 
the game's still limited. It's still like three for strike, four for multiplayer, and I imagine six for raid, um, which is going to be a big of a bit of a problem on my end, just because I'm going to have a lot of friends playing it, mm-hmm. uh, especially on Xbox. And um, there's going to be a lot of like, well, this player, this friend wants to play with us, and this person wants to play with us, so it's. I will say this, it was really funny last night because I had played the strike two times before playing it last night again with my buddy who hadn't played it at all. Mm. And um, the first time I played it, it was with my buddy Monkey and we did it in one go. We had no problems. We, I think I died once. Um, the second time I played it, it was with another friend and I died twice, but didn't die on the final boss. And then last night, it was with, it was with my buddy Andy, who I've talked about multiple times on this podcast and in general. Um, And he hadn't played it at all, but the other guy we had, which was one of our friends, he had played part of it, but didn't get to finish it. It took us a half an hour just to beat that final boss, even though I knew everything the boss was going to (laughs) do. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, they were both titans, and I was a hunter, so we had no warlock, and um, we weren't communicating. We were just like, this will be a cakewalk, but like, that's the other thing about the strike and the opening mission to the beta, is like, it's hard. Uh, Like, it's straight up like, Hey, your light level's 20. The recommended's tw- uh, 210. It's like, oh. Ooh. God oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> damn. That's fun. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have more, 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 uh, uh what's we're looking for? Um, more, <laughs> yeah, like, we'll have more feedback about the game, especially on the PC version, uh, PC beta when it comes out next month. Uh, and, uh, yeah, more about the game when it comes out officially, officially. So, um, yep. yep. More to come. Uh, all right, moving on to our next story. Um, this is regards to uh, two games that went pretty high last month in the MPDs as far as sales-wise. Uh, Crash Bandicoot and Tekken. Tekken te- taking the number one spot last week. Um, but this article uh, specifically talking about Crash Bandicoot. This is from businesswire.com, written by... Uh, let me just get a name here. Uh, I don't. I have, I have no name on here. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, title is Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy takes Sandy Comic Con by storm. Uh, with num- with number one worldwide in physical uh, game release sales in June. The previously unreleased. Oh, it's talking about the DLC. Okay. All right. Okay. Oops. Wrong. Wrong article. Anyways. Uh. Point being. Uh. <laughs> point being. Uh. The game sold ridiculously well. Uh, last uh, last month, and um, alongside alongside with Tekken, um, I I want to say that I want to say like normally when it comes to these re-releases, like they'll do well, but not not this well. And maybe it's the power of nostalgia. Maybe maybe it's because it's being streamed on Twitch, or it's the fact that the, the game just looks incredibly well, uh, or all the above. But this game has sold really well, and it's. You know, it, it then begs the question, like, do we need another Crash game in the series? Um, I mean, we, have, we had it before, but it just wasn't great, or it was okay, or mediocre. But, um, yeah, no, and then they just recently announced that they, uh, in the original Crash game, they had a an original uh, level that they were they cut out from development because it was too hard. And they're putting it in a game, call, and they're calling it a... Uh, uh, I, I just read it. Hang on a second here. Uh, oh, uh, Stormy Ascent, which looks like one of the uh, levels, like towards the end, where you are climbing, climbing up a tower. Um, and that's it. And that's you know, it's really cool. It's really awesome um, that they're doing it for free. I might add. Uh, but yeah, it's you know, it's funny thing because here's thing. Here's funny thing about it. And Greg, this is kind of something that you kind of talked about, you know, prior. Like you're, you're always a person to look forward and to look back. Like you're always a person, like you said, you're, you're more intent of, of games and game developers to be, you know, having games that don't uh, rely too much on on its nostalgia to get its sales. Yeah. Um, what do you? How do you feel about the fact that Crash Bandicoot last month was like one of the top sellers? And I want to say. A lot of it was nostalgia, in a way. Um, I think. Well, I mean, you look at like not just sales, but look at people's reaction to the game. It 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 may have sold well, but it also didn't do well critically. People were calling it the Dark Souls of platformers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> which in itself is ridiculous, but that just goes to show that that nostalgia is is too strong nowadays. Um, yep. 
people people have a tendency to go to the extent of thinking that what they experience as a young person or what they know is solid gold fact in reality that's just not the case um like yes the 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 insane trilogy has its issues with jumping mechanics uh hold on one second i gotta clear my throat (coughs) oh man so i got something in there so i was like oh you're talking about nostalgia (laughs) while you drink that just kind of add on to that like um, yeah, there's a lot of complaints about the gym, jumping mechanic, and a funny thing about that is that the actual developers kind of came out and they didn't really say it like they said it in a, in a different in a developer way, but they were basically saying like get better at the game. <laughs> well, they, they they yeah, what they said was that yes, Crash Bandicoot is harder. Like they were like straight up like yeah, because we had to build it from the ground up. We didn't we didn't make the game to be identical to the original because we can't. Um, we basically had to, we had to try to get it as close as possible, but still not quite there. Yeah, yeah. And um, I commend them for that. I and I, but I also commend them for the same time, just kind of like telling, uh, telling people like, stop complaining. Just you know, if it if you don't like the game, that's fine. But also like, maybe you're not as good at video games as you used to be, or maybe you don't have as much patience as you used to have. Um, I think that 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 is important to tell people too because I that that to me was kind of what I read like that's what I saw from people they just they wanted to demonize the developer for making a game that they couldn't beat like they did when they were a kid or what they at least remember when they were a kid uh, people have a tendency to forget that your taste and your skill levels are a lot different when you're a child your patience yeah. levels are a lot different when you're oh, a kid oh yeah definitely definitely I, get, um, I can't tell you how many times when when I go try and play an old game like especially because every so often oh I'm, I'm I've been playing every so often the the Mega Man collection the first one on, on DS yeah. uh, I'm playing through Mega Man four um you know the younger much younger myself uh would be able to sit, sit down and, and play through the game pretty easily like without a blink of an eye nowadays when I'm playing that game in in, in my DS. Uh, there are definitely some spots where it gets really hard. <laughs> it's it, it, it it's pretty tough. Um, but yeah, like it's a different time, a different era. Um, back then when Crash Bandicoot came out, it was in, it was in the nineties. The PS One came out. It was the one of the launch. It was it was the launch game with the PlayStation One. Um, and you know it was a uh, platformer that not many people you know would think it would be successful because it was going against. Uh, Sonic and Mario at the time, the whole mascot battle. So right. it def things have changed over the years, and the platformers you don't see them nowadays. You, you we're seeing them more, uh, if not like more of a 2D aspect than a 3D aspect. But um, the jumping mechanic, you know, it you know they build it from the ground up, and not everything's going to be particularly the same, you know, as identical as as the real game. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, there's definitely something going to be different, and you know. Maybe it's, just, it's the fact that they just hadn't had enough money to make it absolutely identical to this jumping jumping mechanic and and the fall being faster, uh, or you know getting onto ledges and falling off easier, um, or maybe the fact that it was on purpose. Who knows? But I think that people's minds when it comes to games that you know what they remembered back then is not going to be the same as today. But that's but this goes into my point about like you know I've I've argued and rallied against the idea of like. You know, take off your goddamn rose-colored nostalgia glasses. Like it, you're not, you're not going to remember it as an adult like you did when you were a kid. You, your develop, your taste and your your skill level and your, uh, you know, idea of what a story is changes over time. And yeah, this is why I'm an advocate for the new and the now and not the old. Like if if Vicarious Visions had just made a new Crash Bandicoot game that was similar to the last one but not ex- identical i tell you right now a it wouldn't have sold well enough because people would have just said ah it's not it's not by naughty dog demonizer <laughs> um but then you would also had um uh you would have also had the issue of um where was my brain going with this one you would have had the issue of uh people playing it and and complaining that it was um, not as good as the classic stuff, you know. They they you know right now what it is is like, oh my nostalgia says that it played differently, 
and people are complaining that it's not like the original, but in a different context. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, like what I'm trying to say is that if it were a new Crash game and not a remake, yeah, it would not sold be well. The you're right. Would also been different. Yeah, you're right. The power of nostalgia is a powerful thing, and you know, if it was not said it was a remake of one, two, and three, I, and it was a actual new Crash Bandicoot, I don't think it would have sold well. I think it would have sold decently, but I don't think well. I think yeah, a nostalgia is a powerful thing. And people will have different memories of how they played it back then to, you know, what it is now. Um, which, you know, again, paves the way. Like, you know, I think that after the success of this Crash Bandicoot, are we going to see another sequel from Five Various Visions or another company to make another Crash Bandicoot? I'm not quite sure. I think that this is going to be probably the best we'll get out of Crash unless they make another – unless they make, like, CTR2, which would be great. Would I, be hope, awesome. I sincerely hope that, that – I hope Vicarious Visions makes another Crash game, but it's Crash 4 or just, like, an extension of what we've already known. Like, Yeah. It's – I don't know, man. Like, It's, it's hard. So, like, I don't like, – I'm not, I'm not against the idea of banking on nostalgia. I'm not against that idea whatsoever. I mean – for crying out loud, like, there's things that they announced at Comic-Con that I'm excited about. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah. But but for crying out loud, I also have this thing that I've talked about on this podcast and in my stream and other places called Cautious Optimism. Yeah. Cautious Optimism yeah. allows you as yeah. the player to go, well, it might suck, but at the same time, I'm really excited about it. And... And then when you have that optimism, you're like, oh, I'm looking forward to this thing. But when you're cautious, you go, it might suck. There might be a chance that it's not very good. And then you go, okay, well, I'm going to take that chance. I'm going to enjoy it for what it is. And then it does, it sucks. You're not that heartbroken over it. Right. Um, there was only one situation recently that I was heartbroken over a game, and that was Andromeda. Oh, uh, yeah. But, that, oof. Man. But I think that's because I, I actually had, a, 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 like, it was, that wasn't nostalgia per se. That was just like I saw. That was on hopes and dreams, buddy. That was hopes and dreams. <laughs> but but I also had the ability to step back and be like, eh, it does kind of suck. It's not as bad as other people are making it out to be, but it does kind of suck. And um, I think that for, like, people who are complaining that Crash is too hard or it's not like the original, they're they're now discovering that. The, the, the worry that I have is will that stick? Will that will that sink into their head as like maybe I should take a step back and not be so quick to be excited for something just because my nostalgia says I should, you know? You know what though? What I will say if okay, so that you know, I, I'll, I'll end on this on this last point. So we move on to the next topic. Yeah, yeah. Um I if if so, you know, obviously Crash Insane and Trilogy was a success, you know, with the remake. Um, I'm not sure if making in a, in another Crash Bandicoot game, an original Crash Bandicoot game, would would do well. I think it, it may because of because you know now that everybody knows what the the company who made it and how well of a product they made, like you know they can give them the benefit of the doubt to, to probably make make uh, an original Crash game, which may be good. Um, with that being said, if you're listening, um, please make a remake of CTR because I would play the crap out of that. For those who don't know, it was Crash Team Racing. It was the clone of Mario Kart, and it was good. I'd say better. Now you now you get into that same that same. <laughs> uh, I know. Da- da- dangerous I know. Uh, territory of, of just making a, a remake in general. I I would love a CCR remake. That'd be, would be badass. Anyways, um, <laughs> so <laughs> with that being said, uh, we're move on to our. Give me a second here. Let me let me set it up. Uh, give me a second. There we go. It is time for your Overwatch Minute with Greg D. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I should have been ready. Um, so, uh, there's been... That is loud. Oh, is it loud? Okay, sorry. Uh, I mean, if I can hear it, I can't imagine what it sounds like to them. <laughs> Uh, so let's go. Let's go about two weeks ago. I'm scrolling down this feed that I have of like news and stuff. Um, we talked about Doomfist being announced and him being in the PTR, and um, apparently he had original abilities that they had to take away. Like he was a tank at one time. Oh no way! Really? Oh yeah. shit! 
Damn. Yeah, apparently, apparently he he was a, a lot slower and um, a lot more like power heavy. Um, they they decided to change that just because like moving him around is a lot more fun. Hmm. Uh, Hanzo has an official church now. Oh. Huh. Uh, I didn't, didn't quite look into that, but there we are. Um, uh, there's been a few like changes in general. Like uh, Reinhardt's been up to like changed a little bit to where his, his swings a little bit faster, and uh, I think his abilities come back a little bit quicker or something like that. Uh, but the big thing, the thing that I think is. Um, actually, before I get to that thing, I wanted to talk quickly, quickly about. Did you see that there was a, a comic uh, involving Doomfist? I have been. I saw that uh, around the internet. I didn't really look into it, but I, I saw a few pictures of it, and that kind of got me curious. Like, oh, is there a new new another comic for uh, Overwatch coming up? So, every once in a while, they release a new comic involving the characters and do some backstory, or whatever. Um, for this situation, uh, it was um, it involved Doomfist like escaping jail, meeting up with Reaper, uh, then then like meeting up with uh, Sombra, Widowmaker, and the three the four of them had devised a plan to take out certain people, which they did. Um, they each had their own tasks, and uh, they were all wearing different like costumes hmm. um, to to like blend in. Which I mean, immediately everyone saw those was like, oh, new new skins, right? Those are new skins that we're getting. Yeah, new skins, right? <laughs> um, uh, but the important part was that there are multiple members of Talon at this table at the end. There's there's a shot of like the big Talon table, which is mm-hmm. the familiarization, and there was like Widowmaker, Sombra, Reaper, and Doomfist, but then like four other people, four other shadows. Uh, so we're getting some future characters in uh, on Talon. Uh, either future characters that are similar to like Lady Vaskaya, um, or other playable characters. Cool. I kind of feel like I, I kind of feel like they were going to even out the odds in terms of like, you know how many are Talon and and how many are um, uh, Overwatch because like you know there's a lot more Overwatch characters, you know, good guys versus the bad guys. So um, I, I I would expect them to kind of even out like hey we need more bad guys to even out the teams. Yeah, I I would like more characters that are bad guys. Absolutely, um, I think it'd be fun. Uh, I mean, at, at this rate, we're probably gonna get another good guy next, just because it was like it was a uh, good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy. Oh, okay. And it's arguable that Sombra's a bad guy because Sombra's in for herself. But um, uh, so there was video. I don't remember where it might have been Comic Con, it might have been elsewhere, but there's video of um, of uh, footage from from Overwatch, and hmm. in the footage. People had noticed new weapons. Really? Uh, hmm. There's a there's a shot of uh, two different pictures of a soldier holding two different two different guns. One kind of looks like it has an energy tube in the center of it. The other one looks like it's a solid piece of metal. Um, and then Sombra had like a weird greenish gun. Um, but the important part about like Sombra's gun and some other things is that there's apparently like an organization called Owl O O O W L. So the speculation is that very soon we'll be getting um, customization to weapons. That instead of having gold weapons, we can actually unlock cool-looking guns and stuff, which will be neat for players themselves, considering that you can't really see your character's skin while you're playing. That'd be sick. That'd be, oh, man, that'd be pretty freaking awesome. That'd be pretty sick. Yeah, I'm Gotta really be hype. Also, Doofus has a release date. Oh, I was about to say, yeah, thank God, because I was going to ask, because there was no, last I heard, there was no release date for uh, Doomfist, he was still in PTR, so, what's the, what's the date? Uh, the 27th, so this Thursday? Oh, yes, awesome, Thursday. sick, sick. Um, I think it'll be evening time for everybody on the, on the, our time zone. Okay. Uh, we'll check the, let's see, hang on. Doomfist! Not, not Foomfist, Greg, Doomfist. <laughs> Yep, the, char- the character that Terry Crews is not voicing. Yeah, no kidding. It, it's really funny because they, like... Like, from what I've read, what people were speculating was that um, celebrity voice actors are going to come in and do some, uh, like, uh, surprise lines to characters that you can unlock. I doubt it, though. I really do. 
Yeah. Because something that's important to the developers of the game is that they keep, uh, uh, they keep everything within within canon. Uh, let's go to Data Express. Let's see if they have anything on the time zone in which he's released. Um. Oh boy, this is not the article I should have chosen. <laughs> it's um. Yeah, it's the 27th for sure. I don't know what time for everybody. I have to imagine it's... I, I would hope it's the morning time for everybody, just different morning times. I would assume so. I'm pretty sure, like, different times to put out the character, not all at the same time. So, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, like, different websites and stuff, and I'm not seeing any times. Right. Also, when I typed it into Google, like, I didn't get... I was looking for a direct link to, Bungie, or to Blizzard's website, but I'm not... Oh, there we go. Here we go. Battle.net. That was way down there. That was further <laughs> than Battle, uh, Battle dot net. Uh, scrolling down, looking up release dates, yada, yada, yada. I mean, if we're, if we're using, like, how the other characters are released, it was, like, 10 in the morning for our time. Mm. Um, okay, okay. It's for sure the 27th. Like, there was a whole trailer they did and everything for it. So. Sick. Awesome. Cool. I would be very interested to see how that goes, and I want to see some high-level Doomfest play. I'm very curious to see how that, lo how that looks like. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Especially with the, new, with the new Overwatch League that they've been putting in the works as of late. I've been trying to keep up with that, too. Like, there's, um, I'll, I'll try to get some information and get it to you by next uh, next podcast. But um, they're setting up the, uh, the, the World Cup for <sighs> BlizzCon. Awesome, awesome. BlizzCon's coming up, actually. Now I'm thinking about it. It's coming up it's pretty two soon. Months. Yeah. Month. Two months. Oh, two months. Oh, few. A few. Oh, a few months. I was to say. Few. I was about to say. I was like, oh. <laughs> pretty sure it's in November. Let's, let's see. It's, um, it's usually is November. Uh, I want to say like the first okay, week or first one or two weeks. When is BlizzCon 2017? Uh, November 3rd. Uh, it's only two days. The uh, third and the fourth. Okay. I always, always, always love watching the BlizzCon uh, every year. I usually get the uh, the VIP package so I can watch the uh, panels too. So it's really cool. I, I really enjoy it. I need to actually do that this year so I can do the same thing because I would like to see all the stuff that has to do with uh, um, Overwatch. It's super cool. Plus you get to see consoles for free. My my biggest concern right now when it comes to Overwatch though is like we're getting a new character here very like this week and I'm very excited about that um, which I'll probably play the crap out of that but I, I really don't want to turn my back on Overwatch. Like, I love it so much, but I haven't played it that much in the past few weeks. Um, like, I imagine I'll do my placement matches and I'll play the new stuff when it comes out, but that's as far as that goes, unfortunately, nowadays. Yeah. Um, especially with Destiny around the corner, Destiny 2. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, you'll still get your fans who are going to be sticking with the game no matter what. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's, I mean, we're already human. Happened. We're only yeah, human. Jeff Kaplan, yeah, Jeff Kaplan said it best that events are what's going to keep the game alive, and I completely agree because if there's an event, I'm probably going to play that. Yeah, it, it yeah, and it, you know, with Destiny 2 coming out pretty soon, with just games in general, specifically in October, holy crap! Um, there's there's a lot of good games coming out, and you know, for us who love to play games and talk about them on this podcast, like you know, we're not going to stick to one game in particular for a long time, if you're exception to me because I play just pretty much mostly Skullgirls and other games, but. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like it's um, you know, it, they'll have their own fan fan base, or they'll have their own, you know, people that will still play the game. And Blizzard, Blizzard's a big company, and they're making tons of money, and not just specifically on the game itself, but like you know, in-game, uh, you know, things that they people have been buying as well to get more loot boxes and whatnot. So, I think Blizzard's in a pretty good space with Overwatch right now. So. Uh, anything else, or is that going to be it for your Overwatch minutes? That is it for the Overwatch minute. I will have more information next week about the uh, the World Cup, um, but I think also I'll be able to actually have my opinion on how Doomfist plays. Oh yes, that's true. I might, I'm, I might play uh, some myself just as can see how he's, he plays uh, now than the PTR version. Yeah, I'm not expecting a whole lot. I'm expecting a lot of speculation after he releases, so I don't I don't think I'll have a ton of Overwatch news next week except for those two things. Okay. And that has been your Overwatch Minute with Greg Dietz. They actually ended up, actually ended up uh, right on time, actually, with the song. <laughs> that was actually perfectly timed. <laughs>
Sometimes, sometimes things just come together. Yep. Um, all right, moving on into our next story. Give me a second here. Uh, so uh, this has been rumored, but already uh, there has been some documentation of it. Give me a second here as I bring this up. Okay, so um, hopefully that's the right video beat, uh, footage. Uh, nope, that's not it. Hang on. Did I put the wrong one in here? Uh, yes, I did. All right, wrong one. Okay, well, it's going to be in my face now. Um, well done. Good job. Proud <laughs> of you. I feel like I I'm at least missed up one time during this podcast on this show. For those who are listening on the audio, I put in the wrong view footage for this uh, slide. Um, but basically, uh, there's a report on NeoGAF. Uh, of uh, Nintendo filing a trademark application for the Nintendo 64 controller and more. Uh, it was on a post. This is posted by Ross Till uh, with information and uh, photos of uh, on July 18, 2017, Nintendo uh, company has filed in Europe uh, in the uh, via the European Union Intellectual Property Office for figurative trademark applications related to various game controllers. The applications are follows. Nintendo 64 controller, NES controller, SNES controller, Nintendo Switch controller. Basically, what this is basically come down to is that Nintendo is going to have another uh, classic, and it's going to be on the Nintendo 64. Which, see, we had this conversation prior, like you know, the NES classic was a hit. This SNES is going to be a monster hit. That the pre-orders went up yesterday in Walmart, and they were sold out within minutes. So I'm not surprised by. Um, but uh, uh. Then I, it's, when I think of the Nintendo 64, like I don't think there weren't that many great games on the system, um, as to you know versus NES and SNES. Um, there were some, but not a lot, and some of them were even like you know third party. Like I, they would have to have some licensing deals, like specifically like GoldenEye, which was to many people like you know the almost the game for that console. Uh, and I played it a while back, and it was a lot of fun. But like, yeah, you would need some licensing deal with, and maybe they, they they did it, or they were able to do it, and that's that's awesome, that's cool. But to me, in the Nintendo 64 games, there aren't that many, in my opinion, that were great on that system. There were some, but not a whole lot. So I'm kind of wondering what type of library they would have for that console. But it's no surprise. It's no surprise the fact that they, uh, if they filed a um a trademark for the for the controller for a uh N64 classic. So, I would be interested to see how people play the controller uh, today versus back in the day. <laughs> the, now, the... hold on. I'm sorry. I got distracted by something on Twitter. I totally apologize. I got completely just like I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> that's, that's a Basic, basically, long story short, Nintendo yeah, was, Nintendo was, filed a, a a patent for the Nintendo 64 controller, which many are gonna it's gonna it more than likely is gonna be a N64 classic, and when. Uh, right. My, when my it, question though is, is 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 did they not have the patent before? So, I well, I mean like you, usually when companies trademark things, um, you know sometimes they 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 um, it uh it it expires because you're gonna hold for that patent for so long and you guys renew it. Um, when it comes to this specifically, um, this is in conjunction to, you know. Uh, the the information as far as like specifically for a N64 uh, classic, the same idea for NES classic and NES classic, uh, which I have filed patents for the, for that name and, and its controllers. Um, so because of the trademark that they did for for the N64 controller, many are going to believe that they're going to fall in line with the N64 games that are going to be in the uh, N64 uh, mini classic. And what I've said, and what I've said is like, I, you know, when I think of N64, like I don't think that many are great games are on. There's some, you know, there's some good games on there, but not a whole lot. And even some of the games that were, were great were are third party, unless they have deals with some of these companies, um, or whoever has license now for that, like specifically GoldenEye. Um, it's yeah. going to be interesting what, what games they're going to pick out for that system. Let's look at a list of uh, what we're just here in 64. Um... Games made by Nintendo. Let's see, games by. So I so just kind of off the bat, I think that Mario 64 is an uh, absolute lock for that for that uh, for that mini. Um, I think that uh, Mario 64, Mario Kart, because that, that's those are guaranteed locks on that game on the system. Star Fox 64, another good one. Um, 
I want to say that they might get Banjo Kazooie on there. That'd be cool if they did. But I'm not sure. It's rare, so. Uh, let's see. It looks like they could do 1080 snowboarding. Oh, okay. yeah, that game. Eh? Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's see. They got uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, are they gonna do Animal Crossing on that? Uh, How was that? Huh. Uh, let's see. They don't own. They don't own. Or Rare owns that. Sorry. Um. Do 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 do. do. Uh, no, that's Hudson, Hudson Soft. I was going to say Bomberman, but no. No, that's Konami. Um, no. Oh, is it Konami now? Yeah, Konami owns Bomberman now. Okay. Yeah, it's Hudson Soft that developed it at the time. Oh, now. gotcha, gotcha. Um, not Command & Conquer. So I'm, I'm looking I'm looking at, like, because the, the publisher and developer are two different things, and the publisher for some of these is Nintendo. Yeah. But that's not that doesn't mean they own the rights to that so. yeah i mean like you know you would have to throw out if we're talking about you know games that were good but you may, may have to throw out because of licensing issues like you know you have to throw out conquer you have to throw out perfect dark um yeah that's the, the point i'm making right now by reading some of these games we've got f-zero x is that um nintendo did not develop that many games for the system so they would have to go to outside sources to get games on there that are not branded to Nintendo exclusively. Yeah. And they, they did. They did with the other classic games, other classic systems. That's true. That's true. I mean, Square Enix allowed them to have Chrono Trigger. That, that, that's true. Good point. That's right. Thinking about it, and as, yeah, NES Classic, you have games like Mega Man uh, X on it. That's from Capcom and uh, Castlevania from Konami. So, okay. So, you know, if they can do it, that's fine. If they can, if they can put, like, other games outside from their very own into the into the N64 classic, then do have a decent library. Again, like you know, when I think of N64, like there were some good games, but there weren't a whole lot. You argue decent library, but I argue that the fucking con- the worst controller that's ever been existing on a popular console is the N64 controller. I hate that thing. Yeah, <laughs> you do. I- I'm okay with it. It's I'm okay with it because it just in a weird way it felt kind of natural. It was weird, but. There, there's a ton of problems that I have when it comes to the N64 controller, and I think that primarily is tied to the games themselves as well. Um, but it just, it was just a bizarre controller, and I understand why it was like that at the time, because um, you know, like that, that was the, the the turning point in which everybody was like trying to figure out how to do 3D and how to do. 360 degree movement and all that jazz. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, you go back and you play PS1 or um, N64 games now, and a lot of them do not hold up. A lot of them do not hold up. Yeah. It's like it's like Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie, Conquer, and No Mercy are the only ones that really hold up. Oh, sorry, Star Fox 64. Yeah. Like, those are the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head that I played in the past, like, five years. I was like, these are still, these are still good games. There's a reason so, why, like, there's a reason why when it came to the PlayStation games as well, that were also tackling that same issue with 3D movement, is, you know, a lot of Civ controls and there were tank controls, kind of the thing that Resident Evil was made famous for for a long time. So, yeah, it was definitely an issue. It was definitely well, something I, that I, we're trying to figure out as well. A lot of people will also sit there and say that tank controls are bullshit. And I go, tank controls aren't. The, the thing with tank controls is they worked for for the necessity of what the game could handle and do at the time. Um, tank controls made you feel clunky intentionally because the zombies were slow and you wanted to feel panicky. You wanted to feel that horror element. Um, but once you like, you know, take the whole, the, you know, like what what did let's I mean, let's, if we're going to go into this topic, let's talk about what <laughs> what changed when they went from three to four. Like what made four scary? Four wasn't scary because Leon was a tank controlled character four was scary because uh leon moved a little bit more heavy and he couldn't exactly run away exactly like he did before um or whatever it's it's mechanics in a game matter when it works for that game so i definitely wouldn't say that a game like resident evil was like it's tank controls were a problem um uh Oh hey, what's up guys? I was gonna say like we're That's being a heat rave. Yeah, we're being raided right now by uh, by heat. <laughs> For those who are not uh, listening, we are being raided in on Twitch chat and on our Twitch channel by the half empty E tank guys. Guys. <laughs> um, um. Hey Slappy, I'm defend I'm defending tank controls. Um. <laughs> uh, we've had this we've had this discussion in the like in different 
different times over and over and over again. I think, um, you know, we, we like I talked about going back and playing uh, GoldenEye as an adult, and it 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 plays like butt. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so difficult. Like, um, I I read some stuff. I read some stuff about people going like, oh, you can't do, you know, like look at GoldenEye, you can't do first person on a console and. I understand why they were saying that now when yeah. people were playing first person on a PC. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the dual stick Halo thing came about and it changed everything. Arguably. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think that the dual Max stick Payne. was tremendous for first person shooters. Arguably, people say that Max Payne did it first, which is true. They did do it before Halo, but that's a whole other kind of worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that being said, like. And also, if. if, if I just could throw this out here, but if the N64 classic gets Resident Evil, that would be insanity. Like that would just be so weird. <sighs> that would it wasn't be known. It wasn't known. It, it got ported to the 64. Yeah, like I don't think. Maybe I mean the uh, Capcom would be. I'm not sure if they'll give their. Bl- uh, a part of me will say that Capcom would be okay giving their blessing to Nintendo because they did prior of other games. It's weird that a Resident Evil game will be on that N64 classic because. You know, again, you're right. We, we we don't associate Resident Evil with Nintendo or with the 64 at the time when it came out. And that was a that was something that you know was a Sony brand product per se. Um, it'd be so weird to have it on, on the N64 Classic if that's the case. But who knows? There may be some weirder things that might happen. Again, the N64 era was very a very interesting and weird time in my the, opinion. The, the games the games that will be on the N64 Classic are games that were exclusive to the N64. Yeah. If it was ever ported, or if it's on multiple systems, it won't be on the N64 Classic. Look at all the games that are on the NAS Classic and the SNES Classic. They weren't on any other system. So, and it's very easy to do with the NES. But, um, uh, that's an important factor you have to keep in mind with what games could be added to the N64 Classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's pretty, it's pretty damn obvious that the only reason Nintendo would trademark the N64 controller is for an N64 Classic. Okay. Yeah. My, my my question is, I wonder if they're going to. I would I would assume they would raise. Would they raise the price on this one? Because they did for the SNES Classic. Probably. Um. I mean, it's 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 twenty it's twenty dollars more expensive for the SNES Classic. But let me ask you this: Is the SNES Classic twenty dollars more than the than the NES Classic because of its sixty or sixteen bits? 16-bit games versus 8-bit games, or is it because of Star Fox 2? I was going to say that. That's that probably the big reason Star Fox 2 is because, it, you know, you were... Actually, that is probably the reason. I think that might be the only reason, I think, thinking about it. Because like, if that's the only reason, then it's safe to assume that the N64 class would be 60 bucks. But also, on this entire note, the, the SNES Classic is already a mess. It's already a, just an absolute... Swampy butt mess. Are you even talking about getting the con- getting trying to get the console? Is that trying trying to get the console, it going on. Uh, um, um, uh, GameStop had to cancel a bunch of pre-orders. Oh really? Oh sh- well, I'm not. Oh well, yeah, really? Wow. Mm. I was just not part of our topics, Anthony. <laughs> um. Okay. That uh, that's okay. I'm not surprised, honestly. But um. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy when that thing comes out, and a lot of people are trying to get it. Um. It's gonna be some like. Definitely, some deals been happening behind the back. It's like, hey, I'll pour your pre-order this thing for you if you pay me like a huge amount of money. Um, okay. I, I, I'm. It, it gets me excited. Just, just kind of speculate what's gonna be on there. I, if there's one game I'd like to have on there, um, I would like to have like Killer Instinct on that on that system somehow. That'd be pretty cool. I like to see Jet Force Gemini on there. That'd be pretty sick. Um, I mean, for those. I feel like it's a hard, it's a hard uh, deep cut, but it's I mean, a pretty really, cool really, game. It's a pretty cool game. At this point, you could play it right now. I mean, it's, yes, yes. And it's in the rare replay pack. Yeah. Oh, that's ooh, that is very true. I didn't like that it. That is very good. That's a very good point. I tried to play it and I didn't. I did not think it aged well. Oh, I mean, yeah. To be fair, like uh, the graphics on the on the N64 are like the hardest to get over. That being said, that being said, like Rare is owned by Microsoft now. That is true. So if there's going to be any rare games on the N64 Classic, they have to go through them. Well, what what was the most like popular uh, uh, company that, or at least the, the the company that made the most popular games on the damn system? It was rare. It, it, it was, was rare. Yeah, it was that was rare. their rare's heyday. Was the N64? Yeah. And 
if Microsoft says no, no, then no Banjo Kazooie, no Goldeneye, no Conquer, like no Blast Core, like all that good stuff that people really dug are just not going to be there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm very I'm, delicate on Nintendo's part. Yeah, I am very excited to see what happens if this becomes true well, in is. fruition. But it looks like, you know, from the, the current trend, probably will be true. But just, it, man, it... It is way too early to say. It's way, way, way too early to say. But I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah, I, I think but, so too. Yeah, I think but that... But here's, well, not only on that aspect, but on the fact that if this trend is something that, that Nintendo is doing, what we could see one of two things in the future, uh, 2019 or two, I'm sorry, 2018, 2019, are um, uh, NES Classic 2, NES Cla- uh, SNES Classic 2, or straight up GameCube Classic. I would flip my shit Here's the for GameCube. GameCube Classic. Here's the problem with the GameCube Classic. There are a lot. There's a lot of more third party titles on the GameCube. Than there were on the other three consoles. That's true. That's true. So yeah, it's it's such a touchy, delicate thing. However, that being said, hey Sega, could you like I don't know re-release um uh a game that was on the GameCube that I loved? It was uh, Billy Hatcher. Oh really? Wait. You you're you're one of the few fans who love Billy Hatcher. I fucking love Billy Hatcher, <laughs> man. It's fun. <laughs> wow. I I've heard I've heard. I've heard rumors of people who actually like that game. Uh, I don't, I, I'm surprised to find one. I don't like your tone right now. It's like this. It's like finding like someone who likes Knack. It's it's like the same thing. No, no, it's not. <laughs> to me, it is. <laughs> Hacker is fun, and you know what you're talking about. Feel, all right. I mean, hey. I mean, to each to each their own. I mean, I'm move on. I'm gonna spoil Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, so, all right, moving on to our next topic. Uh, so this, this this event actually happened this past weekend during Comic-Con. And um, this has been reported on uh, BBC, actually, uh, because, man, was the shit show. Uh, this is written by Dave Lee off of the BBC News. Refunds as Pokemon Fest uh, bested by glitches. Uh, as many as 20,000 attendees at a Pokemon Go festival in Chicago are being offered refunds after technical glitches uh, met fans w- were mostly unable to catch anything, let, a- let alone them all. Disappointed fans will also be offered $100 in the form of the in- uh, app's in-game currency, Poke Coins. The event uh, on Saturday had been uh, touted as a chance for fans to come together and catch some of the various monsters on a hugely successful app. But fans booed and chanted, fix our game and we can't play, as, as executives from, from uh, Niatic, the game's creator, attempted to explain the problems. At one point, Bottle was thrown at a presenter on stage and missed. Pokemon Go uh, was launched last summer and has uh, since been downloaded over 750 million times, reportedly making more than 1 billion in revenue. The game required players to walk around in the real world in order to find monsters in different locations. Um... And then I've uh, I'll put the link to the, for anybody who wants to read the entire story. But also on top of that, I've I've read and heard that people were in lines like almost the same as Anime Expo, were like six hour lines to get in, hour lines to get out. Like the entire thing was just a crap show apparently. Um, and like when real, this real, real poop festival. Yeah, and the CEO who uh, went went out there and tried to talk to the crowd and he got booed off the stage. Like, that is insane. Um, but I remember hearing about this during the same weekend, as, uh, this past weekend, of the uh, same weekend as Comic-Con. And, uh, yeah, wow. That that's that sucks. I, for- can't, I can't say that I'm terribly surprised. I really, really can't. Um, it, it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to ever see a developer have that kind of visceral reaction from their audience. But um, they, the, Pokemon Go has never been a good game, straight up. Like I'm just gonna throw it out there. Like, yeah, everybody in the world, everybody in the world was playing it for a hot minute there, but it, it the, the the fan base dropped off dramatically after like a month or two, and that dramatically hurt my throat. Hang on. <coughs> um, See what you did, Pokemon fans? You made them cough. 
Mm, <laughs> Pokemon Go fans, I should, uh, I should yeah, Pokemon Go fans. Yeah. <laughs> I still love Pokemon, and Pokemon Go could still potentially be a good game, but Niantic really just did horrible things to that dog. Um, yeah, they did. They really did. Man. Uh, they shit the entire bed, and... And then some. Uh, man, it's just unfortunate. Like, it, it, and like I said, I can't be surprised about this story, because... They've never they've never done a good job with the game. They've never um, cared about. It doesn't seem like they've cared about their audience that much. So this might be the final final nail in the coffin for the game. My buddy who moved to Wyoming texted me that he caught a Lucario. No, I'm sorry. Um, is it loose? Oh my god, what is it? Hang on, he just sent I, a I, picture of it. Was it the one of rare Pokemon? Because they were they were doing yeah, that this the, weekend. The okay, yeah. Lugia. Ah, uh, yeah, that that character. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I, he, he just goes, like, I didn't respond. He goes, nothing. And I was like, I haven't played Pokemon Go in over a year. So good for you. Um, and I don't know anybody else who's still playing Pokemon Go. I really, really don't. Yeah. And you're right. You're right. Yet again, as far as like how many people were going to play that game for as long as they, when it, when it happened, it was huge. Like it was, it was all over the place. Like it was literally like the nineties again. And it was insane to, to see that. Um, here's here's the here's the trend with um, adults and mobile games. Uh, nine times out of ten, uh, kids will stick with a mobile game because, well, they're kids and tastes are not very strong. But when it comes to adults in a mobile game, you have to give them something more than just what Pokemon Go was giving them. Uh, perfect examples of good mobile games that adults have still stuck with are that like Final Fantasy one that people really enjoy. Like I'm seeing so many of my friends still playing that. Or Fire Emblem, uh, something or other. Um, I played that one for like a hot minute. Uh, but those games, those games will keep people around because of how much there is in it, because of how the game plays, and that it plays like the original stuff. Um, you, you see, you know what I'm talking like. You, you kind of get what I'm getting at. Yeah, uh, yeah. And again, we had this conversation earlier in the podcast. Like, you know, some things that we may have remembered back then. Um, May not be as did I put my right? Okay, never mind. Um, sorry, <laughs> I have this thing I'm playing around with my uh, hands. Um, you know, some things that you know back then that you know we were we like in the, you know back in the day we never may not like today because it, it's a different memory. You know, obviously that like, we grow up and we have things that happen to us and you know our taste changes. You know, you know what we thought was good back then it may not be as good today. Or you know some in some instances. I'm not even I'm not even just talking about that, Anthony. I'm talking about to the extent of like, um. Uh, what makes like let's say like because I'm I'm referring to the fact that like stuff being made now that is uh, retro-ish oh. or reminds people of, of classic stuff and that's why I think that Final Fantasy I can't remember the subtitle to that damn game but it's a Final Fantasy mobile game that is turn-based like uh. the combat in it is turn-based um, the um uh, the, uh, oh my god, the, um, <laughs> Fire Emblem game plays like classic Fire Emblem games, just on a smaller scale. Right. Um, yeah. that's going to keep adults around, but, like, the reason that Pokemon Go failed was there wasn't a whole lot of context to it. Like, it was fun for a little bit because people were, like, going around and catching Pokemon, and that was a cool concept, but the game needed to be more like the, the game itself. Combat needed to be available if you got close to somebody and you had Pokemon. You could store up to six Pokemon on you on your person. Um, you could fight random Pokemon and train Pokemon. Like that should have been a core concept to the game. But what Pokemon Go literally was was just catching Pokemon. That was it. Yeah. And they they added stuff later down the road, but it's that whole too little too late situation. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so, I did have one other story that I have, but, uh, I might just push it for next week, because, uh, we've covered yep. a lot today. Um, it was concerning... What happens if we take a week off? Yeah, that's true. We, we had to cut, to cut up on a lot of stuff. Um, out of curiosity, before we, before we end the show, Greg, did you, did you get a Switch in 2 for a Switch? I don't have a Switch. Oh, I thought you did. No. Oh, okay. I'd get Switch in 2 if I could, but I don't have a Switch. Okay. All right. We could talk about how much money is in the. Uh... 
I, I know that's not like an actual thing. You're not. Right. We can't. We can't spend three hundred dollars and and change on me getting a Switch and Splatoon just for the channel. No, no, because uh, you know the half empty guys are raising money to get you a PC. So, uh, speaking of which, thanks for the host half empty, and the eleven viewers that are watching. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll put, I'll just save it for next week because I know that it was uh, concerning about the online um, functionality of Nintendo and just kind of the fears of. What well, many people were afraid of may end up being happening. Um, so, which I'm not surprised because Nintendo is like, again, when it comes to online stuff, they are the last people to implement stuff that, hey, the rest of the consoles figured out, but they haven't yet. So, um, I'll put you next week. I'll make it another one topic. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for the raid, for raids earlier, half empty, and everybody else who kind of uh, chimed into the Twitch channel. Um, before we go, uh, Greg, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you can follow me on uh, all the social medias under Chub Rock Geek. Um, you can you can find uh, me on Half Empty Energy Tank every Saturday at uh, eight uh, eight Eastern time or five Pacific time. Um, you can um, you can find me uh, selling my body on the court street. <laughs> Oh, there was something else I was going to throw out there, but I totally, totally spaced on it. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, uh, Slappy and I and um, another friend named um, Azalia, I was pronouncing his name, name incorrectly, uh, we're doing a, a podcast uh, Sunday mo- or Saturday mornings, sorry, Saturday mornings called Going Deep or Getting Deep, one of the two. Mm. Um, and uh, it's basically like we, we bring up topics or concepts of uh, – of uh, just thoughtful discussions. Cool. And we, we just discussed them. And um, like the topic, one of the topics that we had this uh, this last Sunday is, do you trust banks? Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to get into. But um, is it yeah, gonna, is um, it on, on uh, iTunes iTunes and other platforms yet, or is it just uh... not yet? Okay. We're, 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 I think he's working on that. I, as, as of right now, I'm no more than a guest like I am on this podcast. Um, gotcha. Okay. But, uh, but definitely check that out because that's a fun thing that we're doing. Cool. Um, there's a lot of more stuff in the works. I'm trying to figure out something to review soon. I might do a – I mean we talked about it on the podcast. So I don't know if I should do a written write-up of uh, Destiny 2, but we'll see. Yeah. I need to write something soon. I've been kind of lazy about writing because I've been busy like left and right, so – Mm. Uh, like right now right now I have to read a whole thing for um, I talked to you Anthony about this before the podcast but a D&D thing that we're starting with Heat uh, yes a little, little behind the curtain thing not too much about that but I have to read the player's handbook um, yeah that's pretty uh, important man mm-hmm. uh, it show is uh, so I have to read that I have to uh, basically fill out this giant thing uh, with the school district, letting them know that I won't hit or touch kids. Um, <laughs> I mean, I word it like that, but that's what it is. Oh, it's God. Straight up, straight up uh, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's more more like serious wording. Right, right. That, email. Oh, man, that got me. That got me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it just did. Wrong. There are some, there are some <laughs> eighth graders I love to backhand, right, right? Just pop them right in the mouth, but... <laughs> Uh, I also like freedom, and I'm not going to do that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, I should I should be doing some some more stuff soon when it comes to video production on the website and or um, uh, re- uh, reviews in general. So cool, cool, um, awesome. Uh, first off, thank you for the host uh, in Supernear76 for your three viewers. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of hosting tonight, which I don't mind. Um, but, uh, you can follow me right on the end of this show too. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Defective Naruto. You can follow the work that, uh, we do our website at missionstarpodcast.com. Um, you can follow the podcast on his Twitch channel as well as on our uh, iTunes and Stitcher. We upload it on Tuesday. Uh, actually, let me get that slide up here real quick, uh, which I need to update actually. Uh, so yeah, as a reminder, if you missed, uh, this, uh, stream, um, this audio version will go up on Tuesday. Uh, for uh, Missions or Podcast, podcast. it will be on iTunes and Stitcher um, and uh, on the website as well. So uh, if you miss any of this, if you want to watch, if you want to hear it on your way to work on on RSS feed for podcasts or whatever, you can do so. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, 
And if you enjoy uh, our convention talks, if you enjoy us talking about anime conventions, comic conventions, I'm pretty sure we'll get a comic convention uh, podcast for the con over for this week because Jeremy and the Rolling Twenties crew uh, went to Comic Con this past weekend, and uh, I'm pretty sure they got some stories to tell. Um, but yeah, we'll have that uh, pretty soon uh, this week on the uh, podcast, which is the con over. Uh, it is also on iTunes and Stitcher, and it'll be up on our website. Um, usually on Fridays, but, uh, you know, maybe earlier if, if needed. Uh, and also, speaking of Rolling Twenties, uh, the Rolling Twenties the crew that's out in San Diego, they have their own podcast, uh, which contains a lot of comic books, entertainment, movies, video games, kind of a whole uh, spiel of nerd in, in one podcast. Um, expect to probably a podcast from them um, regarding their thoughts on, on Comic-Con or whatever, or what have you. Um, I, they were out there in the field. They, they, they went to Hall H, uh, and spent most of the day there, I believe, um, because that lane is crazy. Uh, and there was a big ton of announcements that happened this past week at Comic-Con, which we'll save for another day, but that, man, I'm super excited for, super excited. It's actually been the most excited I've been for outside, uh, from, uh, from a Comic-Con announcements in a long time. So, but that being said, uh, again, Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hosting again. Um, we'll have a show next week, pending if anything happens. But uh, yeah, we'll have a show next week for sure. So with that being said, thank you guys. And we'll see you guys next time.